was trying to think back and how I got to be where I am today and the type of dentistry I practice actually has a name now and I was trying to think last night it's health centered dentistry or health focused dentistry that um, looking at the whole body and so with the and Mitzi's having a contest at the end to see who can say ticks toxins and teeth the best um, yeah so the f dental school started with two days of orientation on Thursday and Friday and I thought oh dear God what are we gonna do for two whole days and different instructors came throughout the school and talked to you and introduced themselves and you got to have your first impressions at that time and I remember I don't know who but they put a cartoon up and I wish I had it It was a tooth walking in and hopping into the dental chair and he said you are not treating teeth this is not what we do and then he showed a patient walking in and getting in a dental chair. He said, we're treating people. We are here to help people. And kind of the lesson there was the minute you focus on one tooth, you've, in, you've lost all perspective. And in today's world, in today's society, a lot of times it's one tooth dentistry, stop shop, you know, what's your problem? Let's fix this and you're gone. We're used to going to the doctor. Why are you here? I have a sore throat. Let's take a look. Okay, here's your prescription. Seven minutes later, you're out the door. And that's not what we're about. Uh, we're about knowing our patients, knowing what's going on, and figuring out what's the best solution for your individual situation. So it's not treating teeth. And in my office, you're not supposed to see a single tooth anywhere because your teeth belong in your head. They're also, they're not disposable. We have a misnomer with that. And I will make the gross assumption that somebody, everybody's here because you are affected in Lyme disease or mold in some way in your life, which has brought you out. Um, so prevention is the key. So trying to have yourself as healthy as possible, and we'll talk about that more. And when it comes to treating gum disease, we're doing things differently. And it's the connection, which you hear in the news some now, about the connection of your um, gum health and heart disease. That has hit the news. Um, I guess we can thank Listerine for advertising mouthwash will fight gingivitis. It'll cure gingivitis. That's not quite true. It does help. And people think it's, you know, how can your teeth affect your whole body? But the best analogy I've come up with with heart disease is we all played with the garden hose growing up. And we all stuck our finger in it. And it's slimy, right? And we all drank from that slimy garden hose. Our water, which is supposed to be okay for us. So as you've got your, your blood circulating through your body, it's, you're going to get buildup in your vessels, just like the water builds up in the water hose. And as that buildup occurs, the diameter of the vessels is getting smaller. So ultimately, the heart has to work harder to get the blood to go through that smaller space. So that's kind of the connection there. And when you've got bacteria coming in through the mouth, that just helps clog things up faster. Um, but there's a definitely a connection with heart disease gum disease, diabetes, we, that's we'll get into that with autoimmune issues, suppressed immune systems, um, with stroke. Um, we've always said stroke, but last night I thought, what, you know, what is it about stroke? Let me look this up. And um, just the bacteria can change your body chemistry, which creates a predisposition to clotting. And it's just a matter of these bacteria and inflammation and just trying to keep everything at bay. Uh, cancer, we, know, we don't exactly know what causes all cancers, but we know with a lot of cancer, there's inflammation and your body just can't fight, but so much inflammation, your cells change. Uh, Preterm low birth weight babies, this is a real problem in our area. Um, there again, we don't exactly know what causes labor, but we know there's an increase in some of the inflammatory cells. And so keeping your mouth as healthy as possible can help you keep the baby. If you don't have access to good dental care, now, um, there are some health insurance companies that will even pr pay for periodontal treatment to try to keep you pregnant, keep, carry the baby full term, because it's cheaper to do that than to end up in the NICU. Um, so this stuff is real. So Lyme disease. Lyme disease is a chronic illness. Um, many, with chronic, many people with chronic illness have Lyme disease, and we're finding out more and more. A lot of people might have it and not know that they have it. And then it's my understanding that the testing for Lyme disease isn't exactly where maybe it, it should be. Um, gum disease is a chronic disease. A lot of people have it, they don't know they have it. Um, and many people with gum disease have other chronic illnesses. So it's all gonna come to a head of keep us as healthy as possible. So it's a matter of seeing a dentist that does a thorough medical exam, medical exam ask a lot of questions. Um, 
I'm certainly not a physician. I'm not going to claim to be a physician. But we have discovered things in our office that people didn't know they had. Aneurysms. I mean, it's just people just take what their day-to-day -day life, my back hurts, so it's just normal. Well, it probably is, but if it doesn't go away, what else could it be? And it's just kind of strange how I, sometimes I feel like we're the hairdresser. People talk to us and they tell us things that they might not tell other people. In today's world, some people are afraid to tell the doctor because they're going to have all these tests. And so it's just taking the time to listen to people and try to customize to what folks need. Um, and sometimes it's just disease management, um, trying to figure out what's going on because of course, the teeth are really important, but they might not be the most important thing going on for this person right now. They may need to have some other intervention first, and it's being a member of a team. And if anybody's played sports and been on a team, it's, you want to be on, you know, with the best teammates, with the best coach. You want to be surround yourself by the best people that have your best interest at heart and ultimately want to win. Um, so Lyme disease, gum disease, this connection, what's going on? Why did Mitzi ask me to come? And I had to think, okay, I'm sure there's a connection. And the first things that came to mind is antibiotics. And as Erin went on, I don't, who knows how many medications she's been on. And this is somebody who would never have taken a medication before in her life. Um, but antibiotics cause oral thrush, which is a fungal infection in the mouth. That's the picture on the right. That's real. We see that. Um, it's very treatable. It's very manageable. But you, you have to treat that with an antifungal. Um, what you also have to do is if you wear a retainer, a partial denture, a denture, a bite guard, any type of sleep apnea, any anything, you have to treat that as well with the antifungal or you're just repopulating the area and it won't get better. And for some reason, that second part doesn't always get passed on to folks. Um, and left untreated, thrush can you know, make, make a mess of the mouth, but most people realize that they have it. It's a simple treatment of mouthwash typically and it's gone. And then you hope that on your next dose of antibiotics it doesn't come back, but if it does, typically it responds with us well. Um, with all the medications, common side effect of a lot of medications is dry mouth. And I'm gonna stop right there because I have a whole nother slide on dry mouth because that is just a real problem. Um, inflammation. With the Lyme disease, people get a lot of inflammation, they get their aches and pains. Well, suddenly, sometimes they think, I have TMJ, temporomandibular joint trouble. And they come in and go, oh, and tell us what's going on. Well, maybe they do have some temporomandibular joint trouble, but they may just have some inflammation that's taking place throughout the body that's not anything to get terribly excited about, but it's something we need to try to manage. Um, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Why did the inflammation get there? Well, maybe there is an underlying issue with this really complicated joint that we can help with. And we certainly have years ago, we never had a, had a, when I was just learning about Lyme disease from our first patient, um, she had had joint damage from chronic inflammation and we had to get her in a splint to kind of level her out that she would wear as much as she could to keep her face essentially from being lopsided. Um, but it's knowing what's going on, and um, I'm certainly not an expert in the temporary mandibular joint. I have had some advanced training in it. I say I know just enough to be dangerous. But it's you know seeing somebody that knows something helpful, hopefully for you, instead of saying no, oh, I don't know, or referring you. And it becomes complicated with TMJ because dental insurance doesn't want to cover it, and medical insurance doesn't want to cover it. And you can get referred to a physician, but you're probably just going to get prescriptions. And the last thing your body needs is just more prescriptions. You need to try to treat the problems, fix the problems as best you can versus treat the symptoms. Um, and then the illness, the decline in self-care. And Erin summed that up. And we've all been sick. We've all not felt good. And, you, you know, you don't want to eat. You don't necessarily want to bathe. You don't want to floss your teeth. You just want to go to bed and be left alone and get better. And that's, you know, sometimes when you're at your worst is when you have to try your hardest to get better. Okie dokie. So, strong immune system is your best defense. Um, the healthy immune system um, does not suffer from a weak spot. The illness attacks the weak spot. Um, where there's a weak spot, there's vulnerability. And that's where we get into that inflammation. We all have inflammation in our body. It's a matter of trying to control your inflammation and keep those levels as low as possible. Um, and it's interesting, I just started reading a book I was going to read over July 4th for fun, and I didn't get to that. 
and I, my birthday was this past weekend, so my birthday present was I'm going to start my book. I'm going to read one chapter, and I'll, hopefully we'll read it when I'm off on vacation with my family in a couple of weeks. But back in the 1800s, this is the book is starting out with kind of the evolution in, of medical education and practice of how we've gotten to be where we're in this country. And um, it's interesting because it, and it's a story about the Kellogg cereal and how foods ruined us, but that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> um, but it starts out that one of the Kellogg's brothers thought the best way to get better or to stay healthy was eat well, rest, and drink a lot of water. And the, it was customary back in the day, if you got sick, what did they do? They cut you. So you would bleed out all these toxins. And people weren't getting better. And he, he's going to school and being taught to cut people and essentially let them bleed to death or hope it doesn't get infected and this and that. And he said, you know, I just think we'd be better off if we ate well, rested, and drank water and flushed it out of our bodies. And I thought, that was in the 1800s. Um, and we've got another slide where, um, you know, early in the 1900s, they were saying the mouth is the gateway to your body. So this isn't anything new. This is not revolutionary. To me, it's just common sense. And we say, you know, that's maybe not so common anymore. Um, and that's where we talk with our patients about keep your mouth healthy, keep your inflammation down. In the winter when the flu comes, we all hear on the news, Lewis Gale, Carillion, they're, they're full. There's nowhere to put anybody else in the hospital that has the flu. Get, they say, get your flu vaccine, you know, stay away from people, rest, do all these things to keep yourself as healthy as possible so you don't get it. And, you know, sometimes it's inevitable that you get the flu, and some people spring back from the flu within a couple of days, but some people it takes several weeks. And this past year, it seemed to take people like a good three to four weeks to get over whatever flu it was that was going around. So the bottom line is keep your immune system as strong as possible so if you get hit with it, you don't get hit with it as hard and that you spring back faster. Um, so moving right along, the mouth is the gateway. And um, so this was from Dr. Weston Price in the early 1900s. You know, dental health, diet, microbes, infection in the mouth are huge factors in determining the whole health of the body. And that's why I just get back to you are what you eat. If you put garbage in, you're probably going to feel like garbage. And I've got three children, and I'm just like, you know, you, you're starving. Well, the bag of potato chips is really not going to really make you feel that much more full or that. Of course, carrots, they don't think cuts it either, and I'm right there with them. But, you know, eat some nuts. <laughs> Do something that's going to stick with you. Um... But the mouth is the number one source of body's toxins. Your mouth is loaded with over a th thousand different types of bacteria. Your mouth's nasty. Everybody's mouth's nasty. They say a dog's mouth is cleaner and healthier than ours. I don't know. I don't really want to get that close to the dog because it really doesn't look that much better than... I think mine looks better, but I don't know. The dog seems to stay healthier. Um, and that's where we get into management and maintenance. And I always refer to a car. We all drive cars. We all get new cars, we all have old cars, we wear cars out. This is all you've got. You don't get another one. This is your mouth. And you change the oil in your car regularly, you keep your tires balanced in a line, and 20 years from now, no one's probably still gonna have the same car. You're gonna be on a different car. You've gotta keep your oil changed in your mouth, you've gotta take care of it, keep your bike, keep everything as balanced as possible. If you get out of whack, it's gonna wear and tear unevenly. Um, and I had something else and I can't remember what went with that. All right, so we'll keep moving along. So that was touching on Lyme. So the gist of Lyme is inflammatory response to the Lyme disease and then the treatment for the Lyme disease and how to manage that within your mouth. And keeping a healthy mouth is not going to keep you from getting Lyme disease, but having a healthy mouth before you get affected is the best prevention for everything. And then Mitzi said, you need to talk about mold. Okay, then there's mold. And it wasn't exactly certain where to go with mold. Um, and mold to me, I don't really understand it. I grew up in Eastern North Carolina and mold and mildew country. And some people are very affected by it. And other people, I mean, there's, I feel like there's black mildew just everywhere and it's just there and they're okay. So is mold changing in today's world like the bacteria? I don't know. But we know more mold produces spores. We inhale the spores, and that is where we get our respiratory issues, which irritate, irritate the mucous membranes, which is your nose, sinuses, throat. 
in your mouth and irritation causes bleeding. So there again, we've got the inflammation, the irritation, the introduction of the bacteria into the bloodstream, doing its thing with connection with your overall body and your immune system. Um, and then, so we've got that, and then sinuses. Sinus issues seem to be more year-round now than it used to be more seasonal. Spring and fall, we'd see people come in with sinuses, but we have a couple cases a month probably, patients come in, I've had this toothache, it kind of comes and goes, can't tell exactly where it is, and I say, how have your sinuses been? What do you mean? I say, well, most of the time when somebody comes in and it's very vague and it's very random, a lot of times it's sinus. And a sinusitis can, menu, can mimic a pulpitis. And you can have a root canal done on every tooth in the top of your head. And if it's a sinus, sinus issue, it's still going to feel the same. Um, and they're just different things we talk about. You know, lean over. Does that make it hurt worse? You know, does it hurt more in the morning or at night when you're lying down in bed? There are different things we can figure out. And we all have very large sinuses in our cheeks. Tooth roots are very close, and sometimes they are in those sinuses. And it's just keeping your sinuses as clear as you can, which is pretty hard. But there again, it's having your body as strong as possible to fight off anything that gets warded to it. And um, that's where I kind of was going to say, you know, with, with herpes. There are lots of different strands of herpes. We're all exposed to herpes all the time. That's what was on the other slide. HPV. We're hearing more and more about the human papillovirus, oral cancer. We know that that's connected. We're exposed to that all the time. It's just a matter of who's got the strength in their immune system to fight it off and who doesn't. And keeping everything healthy, healthy. And that will reduce your trips to see the dentist that everybody says they don't want to do. It saves you time, saves you money, saves you radiation with x-rays of me going, well, can't you x-ray it again and see? Your sinus is still there. And, yeah, and nothing you're telling me indicates an abscess tooth. It can be tricky to tell the difference, but that's where you are. Okay. Dry mouth. I am passionate about dry mouth because it is such, such, such a problem. And we just had a new patient in today who's my neighbor's mother who needs to have full mouth extractions because she's, you say she's old, she has dry mouth, she's not able to take care of her teeth. It's a huge, huge problem. Saliva is critical. Um, it's your body's natural way of trying to cleanse the teeth, wash the plaque away, so keeping the plaque levels low, neutralizing pH levels. Some of us, well, as a whole, our environment's becoming more acidic. We're seeing more and more acid reflux issues. We're seeing more acid erosion in the mouth. And, you know, everything seems to just be kind of dissolving around us. Um, and keeping the pH as balanced as you can in your mouth is, of course, the more basic it is, the less erosive factors you're going to have going on and the better everything is going to be in the mouth. Um, soda, I've almost kicked my soda habit completely. I'd say I'd love when it's hot like this to have an ice cold bubbly drink. It's just kind of fun to me. But it's, um, it's a carbonated beverage. It's carbonic acid. So you're just bathing your teeth in acid and if you have a regular soda, um, the average 12 ounce can of soda, which most people don't drink anymore, they've got a great big one, has over 12 tablespoons of sugar in it. So you combine the sugar and the acid together in a dry mouth, it dissolves teeth. So diet soda, okay. You cut out the sugar component, it's more acidic. It's like 2.1 or 2.3 or something. It dissolves things and people are like, uh. And so have you ever had a corroded car battery and you need to get the corrosion off, what did you do? People pour soda on it. That's happening in your mouth and throughout your entire body. That just can't be good. That just can't be good. Um, they say if you drink a soda, you're not to brush your teeth for 30 minutes to give the pH in your mouth a chance to try to rebalance and reestablish it. That if you brush right afterwards continuously, you can damage the enamel. And that's the last thing we want to do. Um, so saliva lubricates the tissue. We have all these patients coming in, and this is more our geriatric population. Our salivary flow decreases naturally with age, common side effect of a lot of uh, heart medications, antidepressants, different things they're on. And if you look at the fine print of most any medication, it's going to have dry mouth as a side effect. So they need to have their teeth pulled because they, they break, they get decay around the gum line, they break off. Well, you need saliva to form a suction to hold a denture in. And if you don't have that, it's just not ever going to work. Everything's doomed to fail. Then you've got these little old people 
And then you start talking, well, one, it's already traumatic to take teeth out, and then if they need to have implants, that's a whole nother thing. Are they healthy enough for that? And it's expensive, and it's, it's just a big surgical ordeal. Take care of what you have. We're about prevention. Um, so without saliva, you get gum disease. The plaque sticks, and I've got a picture. We'll talk about that next. But um, everybody's had dry skin. Imagine having a really dry mouth, not a drop of saliva in there. And we, in our office, it's Mojave dry, and the tissue just cracks. And so if you're eating, that's not comfortable. And then if you don't have teeth, and that's just your tissue constantly being abraded, opening up wounds for the bacteria to get in. Um, decay in cavities, plaque sticks like Velcro to these teeth. That's what we call them fuzzy teeth. They come in and you can brush all you want with that and it can be really hard to get off. And oftentimes even our, stu our stuff won't get it off. We have to go in there by hand and really try to scrape it off and then go try to blast off that fine layer of biofilms in there. In bad breath, nobody wants that. But ultimately it leads to tooth loss and the dentures, then the poor nutrition. If you don't have teeth, you can't chew well, you can't eat well, and that's not going to help your body any better. Um, you know, and then this, when I was going over this last night, I was like, gosh, I wonder, sleep apnea is the rage now. It's everybody has sleep apnea, and that's when typically it occurs with age, with loss of muscle tonicity, and so things are kind of collapsing in the neck at night. And then the tongue can block the airway. And I thought, well, you know, we talk about kids that have teeth removed for orthodontics. They are more prone to sleep apnea. Well, what if you have all your teeth removed and we tell you not to sleep in your dentures at night or you'll get a fungal infection? Or if that dog go? I thought, these people were probably really dooming them to have sleep apnea. Um, so yeah, and then I put on there. Rest, eat well, and drink lots of water. Um, Risk factors. I was trying to, I'm a picture person. I didn't want to gross anybody out. So this person has actually been cleaned up. Um, but risk factors of gum disease, red swollen gums. We can tell that this person's got some red gums in there. Uh, and we, that looks tender and painful to me. I don't know what you guys would think. Um, there, people have heard of trench mouth. That is real. We don't see it very often, thank goodness. But it has a distinct odor. It walks through this door and all of you will start looking around going, what is that? I mean, it's bad. It's, it's hard to be in the room with it. I can look at anything all day long. The looks don't bother me. It's the smell. And when you smell that, it just, it's a game changer. But you can clean it up like this and it's gone instantly. Uh, receding gums. I think you can tell that this person's had some receding gums up in there. And loose teeth. Gum disease is about losing the bone support that holds the teeth in place. And over time, continued bone loss, it's like fence post. And these teeth are becoming like fence posts that they just can't, the chewing forces are just going to um, lose them. And gum disease causes irreversible damage. Once that bone is gone, it's gone. So stages of gum disease. On the left, we have healthy gums with lots of bone. This is like, I don't have a pointer, but the yellow is the bone. It's considered within normal limits to have three millimeters or less of healthy tissue sitting around your teeth on top of good healthy bone and you live happily ever after. With gum disease, you start to have the inflammation. You'll have the bone up around the teeth, the gums will start to swell. The bacteria get down in there. You can't clean effectively on your own at home deeper than about three millimeters. So the bacteria get down in there and so they're getting the upper hand. Then as this progresses to the mild periodontitis is the fancy dental term for gum disease, here, it's going to kill me not to point. We're starting to lose some of the bone there. And so as that bone's cut, lost, that's gone. It will never grow back. People try to make a connection with osteoporosis, and this is different bone. They're not really. And to treat the gum disease, the goal is to treat the swollen tissue above, have it shrink, and have good healthy tissue sitting on top of that existing bone. As it progresses to moderate, we're in trouble now. The rule of thumb is if you've lost more than 50% of the bone around a tooth, it can't withstand those chewing forces and you're back to the fence post analogy. And here, this is a molar, multi-rooted tooth, and you can see where it's pink in between the roots of the tooth. That tooth is a goner. The bacteria can get down in that V and they can live and they can maintain and continue to eat away at the bone. You can't clean effectively in there. We can't clean effectively in there. And then the severe periodontitis is there's only hardly any bone in that tooth. That tooth is loose and sometimes people pull these out on their own and sometimes they can't quite get them. But that's just a sad ending because when that comes out, you don't have any bone to support the denture. There's nothing there versus if you had a big ridge of bone. 
You can't put an implant in that. There's not enough bone. It's, the nerve is not that far up underneath there. And that's what we're seeing with a lot of our, our older folks. Prevention is the key. Okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself. But there's help and there's treatment. So with gum disease, what do you do about it? Well, for starters, try not to get it. And if you get it, ad address it early. And um, you can't reverse it necessarily. You can reverse gingivitis, just swollen gums. But bone loss, it's irreversible. But you can maintain it. Um, unfortunately, there's no pill. There's no mouthwash. There's no magic wand. There's nothing we can throw at it that's going to just make it go away. And that's where in our practice we talk about education. What's going on in your life? What's going on in your lifestyle? What does it take to treat it? And I say we have to form a partnership. I can't treat it for you. You can't treat it for you. But together, we figure out how to make it work for you. Um, and that's a commitment. And some people can commit and make lifestyle changes. Some people can't. Okay, that's all right. We're not going to judge you or say you're crazy. But it's figuring out if you're at that fork in the road, if you're going to go, you know, either treat it and try to save teeth or, nah, I'm not, you know, that's just not going to work for me then we try to figure out the next best alternative of, okay, do we need to lose teeth now? How can we plan to maintain the rest? Or and it's just figuring out exactly what's happening for that person. Um, see a professional as soon as possible. Postponing treatment only leads to more expensive, extensive treatment and the tooth loss. And that's um, you know, forming that partnership. And what we do essentially is, um, numb people up and they're like yes shots you want to be comfortable you want to have everything numb and essentially I'm from the coast you have barnacles of tartar underneath your gums and we get up underneath there we scrape your barnacles we get those teeth as slick as possible so the bacteria don't have that home to stick to and then teach you what to do at home to cleanse those areas daily to keep the bacteria to stay a step ahead of them um, so oral hygiene instructions we do harp on that I don't think we lecture but we do put a lot of emphasis on that. It's making sure you have the right tools for your mouth because everybody in here has different hand-eye coordination, fine motor skills. You certainly have your challenges right now. And it's, more challenges than that. Well, I'm not going to say that. Um, but it, it's with following up with the proper care and... It's kind of embarrassing to stand up here and say, you know, get your teeth cleaned every six months. There's no science on that. We adopted that from a, when toothpaste was invented in the 1940s, and they just kind of threw in and see your dentist every six months. Um, and that's our standard of care. That's what we practice. That's what we do. For patients with active gum disease, we see them every three months, every 90 days. The science is it takes the bacteria 90 days to get back down to the bottom of these gum pockets and start the process all over again. So that's where, um, talking about fighting insurance today, I told a patient, I was like, oh, I'm all about a good fight. And I said, and you know, and I want to win. And, you know, we, if we start treating a gum disease case, we want it to be one that we think we can beat. And then sometimes we start, so we're just buying time, and the patient's okay with that, but that's making sure everybody's on the same page. Okay, so what now? It's having a thorough periodontal evaluation having a full mouth series of x-rays, not just a few here looking for cavities in between the teeth. You need detailed x-rays looking at bone levels and a lot of times you can kind of tell the quality of the bone there with what's going on. Um, and it's measuring the gum tissue around each tooth. It's having six points of gum measured around each tooth. And some patients come into our office, we do some sedation, so we get some referrals for people who you know, they, one, they, it takes all they've got to get through the door, much less talk about what we're going to do to them. And you have to have them conform consent. You have to know what you're going to do. Um, but I can't measure that person's gums on the first visit. There's no way. And if you've got barnacles of tartar underneath the gums, it's not going to be accurate. And that's one of those where we just take our x-rays. Um, and we've been known with some people that if you look at them, they're going to gag. You can't get in their mouth. And that's where the best we can do is try to use some sedation and take the x-rays and do the best we can at that point in time. And you just, you make do. Um, but following treatment recommendations, if you're a rule follower, that's great. Not everybody is. And it, I'm a rule follower, so I just don't understand some people. Why would you put yourself through something? and then not do what's necessary to take care of it. I don't understand that. But I'm a maintenance person, not everybody is. Um, and bottom line, you don't want dentures if you don't have to have them. They're not teeth. 
they look like teeth, but they are not teeth. They don't work like teeth. Um, and that's why I always tell people, somebody says, oh, you know, my mom had dentures. She, she never complained about them and this and that. And I say, when she went out to eat, did she order what she wanted or did she order what she thought she could eat? And by golly, one of the few pleasures we have left in life is eating. And I was like, I want to be able to do it as long as possible because we see too many people that can't. Um, and then can you afford not to treat? And that's what we talked about. Postponing treatment only leads to, to worse problems. And can you afford to compromise your immune system anymore? That's what this is about. It's, it's um, preventing the weak spots, and letting the bacteria enter your body. It's protecting your gateway, keeping everything as healthy as possible. Um, and with dentures, it's, I mean, people always think dentures are the solution on our new patient paperwork is getting to know your patient. We used to have a whole page, but people found that really annoying, so we cut it down to half. But we cut out the question of, do you plan on wearing dentures someday? And I was amazed that the number of young people would come in and say yes. Because I think, you've never had a cavity, you've never had any real dental work done, but you plan on wearing dentures. And well, they just thought that's part of the process. Somehow we just think it's okay to take teeth out and get dentures, but we don't know what that final story's like. Um, hopefully nobody in here is in that situation and they're kind of, I always, people, if you go to dentures in a day, I think they kind of give you good, better, and best. And I always say it's kind of worse, worser, and worser as dentures go. I mean, if you, some people can be happy, but we see some of the worst dentures in the world. Patients love them, can do whatever they want. We see some of the best dentures in the world and people complain. Expectations. Um, and one set of dentures isn't it. You don't get them made once. Throughout time, the bone slowly erodes and melts away. So it's remakes. So the younger you are that you get them, the more remakes you're going to have through life, and that's more expense and time and all that. And the worse, the less bone you have, the less good the denture's going to be because there's not that much to support it. Um, dun, 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 dun. So dental insurance, we always get questions about that. You know, how does that handle? Um, and that's how I was thinking that dental insurance is really not dental insurance, and medical insurance, we're all supposed to have it, and we have a clue of how that works. But it doesn't work like your car insurance or your house insurance. Um, in health, you, no one's 100% healthy. We're all going to end up at the other end of the spectrum someday. That's inevitable, but it's a balance. And where you are on the scale between health and death. And you can't insure that. You can't buy more health. If you crash your car or somebody crashes into you, we had that happen, your insurance helps with that. You can buy more of that. You cannot buy more health. You have to take control of the situation. And unfortunately, if you wait for dental insurance or medical insurance sometimes to take control of the situation for you, it could be too late. Um, and that's again where I'm, I'm all about a good fight. Insurance, you have to fight and fight and fight. But I hope everybody fights insurance because if you don't stand up and fight insurance, nothing will ever change. Um, so we're pleased for patients that have dental insurance. We think that's great. Obviously, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, as far as fighting gum disease, some insurance pays nothing. Some pay 80%. It's a big, you know, you don't know. Some policies have a maximum they'll pay out for a one-time treatment of, we've seen $300, we've seen $500. It's just, every policy is different and everybody's heard of Delta Dental, it's here in Roanoke. But every Delta Dental policy is different. You can't just, if somebody's got this and you get the same Delta Dental, you may not have the same Delta Dental. And that's we say, read the five print and please make certain you know what you're getting, particularly if you are paying for it. Um, in our office, we help people maximize their benefits to the best of their abilities. You I mean, you can send off for pre-estimates. We've got one patient who she's that patient. We can't get x-rays on. We can't do anything. She can let us look and we have an idea of what we're going to have to do. She doesn't want to do anything without a pre-estimate from insurance. I get that. Insurance won't pre-estimate anything without x-rays and those probing points on her gums. I get that too. So what do you do? Well, if she waits for insurance, she's already borderline. She's already been told by others you're going to lose your teeth. She's going to lose her teeth, which is really sad because it needs to be done. Um, so the bottom line is you cannot rely on insurance to be 100% financially responsible for you. Um, and then it doesn't work like medical. Medical, you can keep going to the doctor and you'll still have your co-pays and you'll have this, you'll have that. Physical therapy, you can max out on what they'll pay out per year. Dental insurance is the same way. 
Most policies are around a thousand, some are fifteen hundred. We did have a patient this year, his policy was twenty-five thousand dollars a year. I said, that must be a typo, but still twenty-five hundred, that's amazing. Well, they paid like two hundred and fifty dollars on a crown. I said, wow, we can crown every tooth in your head this year and you still won't reach your maximum of twenty-five thousand dollars. I mean it was yeah, it sounds great on paper, but the way it works, he's getting no benefit. So you've got to know what you're getting. Um and, okay. Then what if I don't have dental insurance? In our office, we've started a savings program in the office to help these people out. It's kind of join the club and you get a discount on everything. Trying to find a better way. And that's um, actually the current trend. Everything I did read when I was off, I didn't read my fun book. I tried to get caught up on professional reading. Is trying, because people are realizing more and more dental insurance doesn't work the way I thought it did or the way that it should. And it's, um, cutting out the middleman, but there are all these little startup companies popping up now. They're advertising them on TV of you know, the dental savings plan. And from what I've seen online, from the dentist's perspective, some of it's worse than dental insurance. I thought they're not going to get any dentists to participate in this plan. You're going to buy the plan because you saw it advertised on TV. It sounded like a good deal, but who's going to be your provider? Mm -hmm. Make sure you understand what you're getting. Um, and it's just easy to do it in the office because that's, there's no waiting period, there's no deductible, there's no, to me there's no nothing, there's no fight. Let's just get started and help you. Um, so our special offer to you for coming tonight, this is when I felt like the salesperson, because um, Mitzi was talking about the, somebody else was coming, they're like, you know, you're going to be a tough or either. Um, Vicki told me I was going to have a tough act to follow up, but I thought for anybody that has active gum disease and signs up for the treatment program, which it's, it's a, it's a multi-appointment, it, it's a process. It's not, a, again, an overnight fix. Um, I believe in, I'm not really a gadget person, but I totally believe in having the right tools and I don't get any money. I thought I don't get any money from Oral-B, but I am totally biased about toothbrushes. I think Oral-B makes the best product simply because I couldn't find what I wanted. They have multiple heads you can put on the, the electric handle, which does a great job, but they've got a little head that's pointing like a pencil you can use to trace around the gum line and get into all these nooks and crannies. Sonicare, I think, is a great product, but the head is just gigantic, and people think we're American. Bigger is better. Not in your mouth. We have a lot of adults with a small mouth that I say, I don't want to insult you, but I'm giving you a children's toothbrush. And oftentimes they will say, that was the best thing ever because I can reach in my mouth now. But if you go to the store and you buy a toothbrush, I mean, you can buy them this big. And Oral B makes a head that big. And I said, take that out of the office. The sales rep's like, you're not listening. I said, you're right, I'm not. That's too big for any human's mouth. Take it away. Mm -hmm. um, and then anybody that doesn't have active gum disease, this is a really fancy, fun toothbrush. Um, it connects to your phone. It'll tell you where you missed, where you brushed too much, where you know too much pressure, not enough pressure. Some people need that. Some people are like, I'm not ever going to use that. I, I don't have one. I think it'd be kind of fun. Um, but not everybody needs all that. I wouldn't deny it if you wanted it because it is cool and fun. And the new ones, you can pick what color you want to make it glow. If you want a pink toothbrush, you can make it pink or you can make it purple. Um, who cares? Um, we carry in the office the, the top of the line Oral-B because it's got all these widgets and gadgets and people will use that. And then we carry the bottom of the barrel Oral-B which is essentially just an older version of this that still gets the job done if you don't need all of that. Um, and I compare brushing your teeth to mopping the floor. I am not a good mopper. Never have been. I can sweep and I can vacuum and I can do all that stuff beforehand but I still feel like I make mug cakes when I mop the floor. And with your toothbrush, I feel like it's kind of the same thing. You're just kind of, you're, it's better than nothing, but you're just kind of stirring things around. Um, if you, particularly if you have dry mouth, you need the mechanical stimulation of that powered toothbrush to really break up those biofilms and get them off the teeth. And then they're great for somebody that's compromised and can't do as good a job as they would like to do. Um, so in conclusion, this is real life. I'm trying to see what I write on here, Mitzi. Where'd you put the glasses? Um, this is real life. It's not going away. Um, you need the right support team. And one person can't do it all. That's bad, isn't it? I like, and then I have to try to decipher my own handwriting. Um, and so that's why I just said I believe maintaining your oral health, of course, is critical. And just keeping your mouth as healthy as possible from the beginning. Because we're all getting older. And nothing gets easier with age as we go through the process. So 
That's Lyme disease, toxins, and keep your mouth healthy 101.